structures. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, who of you does 3D regular in your wall? Who of you does look at coronary sinus regular in 3D? Pulmonary veins? No one. We also don't do that. <laughs> but <laughs> because it's the topic of the talk, together with Professor Mineri, we did a lot of video recording and all that. I have to apologize. I cannot show any GE pictures. But uh, of course, GE or Siemens, it doesn't matter. All do 3D. And uh, these are the, uh, the publications where all my, my slides are built on for the 2D. And as you have heard that several times, without a good 2D image, you will not be able to get a 3D image, of course. And that is, mitral valve is nice. So, and it, you gave a fantastic talk and you show beautiful pictures, that's great. Whenever you come to all the other structures, it's really painful, at least for me. And maybe it's also for you. So you have to have really excellent image quality. And you have to admit that you cannot see any every structure in every patient. So don't waste time too much if it's not really from a, for a clinical purpose. And all of these structures, I think, oh, have some clinical purpose, but not much. One of them is tricuspid valve. Yes, for tricuspid valve, you know all these the new procedures with the clipping and all that tricuspid visualization of the tricuspid valve is key for all the transcatheter procedures and what i realized when we started with that that i don't had any clue which leaflet i see with the 2d on the on the tricuspid everyone knows about the mitral anterior mitral uh, anterior and posterior leaflet but with the tricuspid i don't know you all know these four images, how you can display it with 2D. And then that is from the guidelines and recommendation that the interatrial septum should be at 6 o'clock p.m. At 6 o'clock position. So then you may have the septal, the anterior, and the posterior leaflet. The more patient with tricuspid valve you, you visualize, the more you will see that the tricuspid valve is not tricuspid at all in a lot of patients. So that is a, a picture of the tricuspid where you have here the septum. Here you have the aorta, the mitral valve. So it's six o'clock position. So that means that is the septal leaflet. From here to there is the anterior leaflet and that is the posterior. And you see in the anterior leaflet here, a cleft or whatever, which is quite common. That is, a, I think, quite a nice picture of the tricuspid valve. <laughs> you won't get it in every patient due to the fact that the ultrasound beams are not perpendicular. So when you have a septum there and if the aortic valve is a little bit calcified or whatever, you will struggle with that, of course. What I love in clinical practice is, so that when you start with the, uh, with the four gem of you and then you switch to that live 3D. That live 3D, that should run. The live 3D, starting from that is if you press the bottom elevation post that is your cutting plane from the 2d image and you have the elevation posterior to that cutting plane so that will give you a little bit more spatial orientation and then why doesn't it work it should just give me a second it should work automatically Okay, that's like that. I thought I did it, but in fact I didn't. So now it should w run. Yeah. So you start with the fourth chamber, then you press the live 3D. That is your 2D image. And with that elevation, and then you tilt the, the image, and then you see this is your cutting plane from the 2D. Then you notice, okay, that is the septal leaflet, that is the interior leaflet. You see that? <coughs> and that is the posterior. So that means <coughs> if you want to visualize <coughs> the posterior leaflet for whatever reasons, what do you have to do? <coughs> Just insert the probe a little bit. And then you, you see until that cutting image is crossing the posterior leaflet. And then you switch back to 2D 
to have higher frame rate, and then you know exactly which part of the tricuspid valve you visualize on 2D. Okay? And, and that is, I think, f for, for us, really a good thing to do with the tricuspid. So you have that on the PDF file, how you do that as well. Another thing what you can do is you can use iCrop. I don't know what's the name in GE. OK. So, so that means you have that 3D, which you have seen already, and two 2D images. And then you define that blue line is where you look at the tricuspid. You have the lateral width, and you have that elevation width. And you see in that image right now, Lateral width is fine, but elevation is not fine. So that means you hardly see the whole tricuspid. Then you can adjust, so you can increase increase the elevation width, and then, then you have the tricuspid valve <coughs> as well here. OK, that is what you can do practically. So remember, of course, that if you want to have such a image, you have to rotate that image 90 degrees in the set axis, so that your septum is at 6 o'clock. Here is it at <coughs> 9 o'clock position. But that is it, what you can do afterwards. I don't know exactly why they want to have it in, this, in the 6 o'clock position, but it's in the guidelines. Because for some reasons, for, for some procedures, it's good to have the septal in the, in the, the 9 o'clock position, but that is what they, what they want. So that is the tricuspid, so one structure gone. Pulmonary valve, that is short. That is the theory. Theory is you start with the middle vigil or upper esophageal, 90 degrees, where you see the pulmonary valve, hardly to see in 2D in, in most of the patients. And then you, you tilt and rotate the picture, and then you have the pulmonary valve here. I'm lucky to present you this picture. Where you see that is live 3D again. So based on the 2D image, and then you just press the live 3D, you have the cutting plane. That is quite nice. Where you see the, the pulmonary artery main stem, you see the, the valve here. And then you can crop it, and you can tilt it around, and you see the three leaflets of the pulmonary valve. I worked for years to show you that image, <laughs> <laughs> I tell you. So daily life looks like that. You have no image on the aortic arch. You hardly see the pulmonary valve here because it's calcified. Then you press 3D. What you see very nicely is your right ventricle, but no leaflet of pulmonary valves. That is at least our German experience. I don't know if Canadian looks different, <laughs> but <laughs> German. So I, I would say. And not, not only me, there's currently no evidence for 3D imaging of the pulmonary valve. It doesn't make sense. It's a waste of time, I think. If you want to do a lecture and you need one, mm -hmm. just don't, don't agree to the lecture before you have at least one year time <laughs> <laughs> to get that. So th then the left atrial appendage. That is, who of you are involved in left atrial appendage closer or something like that, procedures? W doing anesthesia or doing also the TE? Anesthesia, OK. So the, the nice thing in 3D for, for left atrial appendage is, of course, that you can measure all the things that, they want, that the interventionists need to decide which size of, of closure. So you have the, the length of that, you have the circumference, and you have the diameter. So the thing is, you have to have to, to center your pulmonary, uh, your, your left atrial appendage in 2D, and then you can do either a uh, live 3D or you do a Zoom mode. And that is a publication which I would recommend to you from Nina Wunderlich. She's in Frankfurt. And there are nice pictures showing the, you the anatomy of that. So how do you do that practically? You just uh, center, try to center the left atrial appendage. Then you press. That is live, uh, the 3D zoom, where you have that region of interest to define. And then you see that here. For all that structures, except of 
of the tricuspid. My recommendation is that you use a lot the brightness and the smoothing button because otherwise you won't get really good images. I hardly use the smoothing button for the mitral valve, but for all that structures, left atrial appendage, pulmonary veins, I use that a lot. So the smoothing, usually, at least in the machines we use, is between two and three, and for these things, I increase it up to eight and nine. So that is your 3D, and you know that it's at anatomically, so you don't see anything. Then you tilt around, and you still don't see a lot. Here you can see something. Here you see some, something. The, the, the difficult thing, I, I, at least the, for me at the beginning, was really these are pictures you won't see in 2DT. Not at all these imaging planes. For the mitral, we, we see that. For all these structures, you don't see that. So it's really good to have an idea of the anatomy. And for acquiring the image, if you set the region of interest here, this up, up there, that creates this artifact. So if you decrease a little bit the, the region of interest, that would help you a lot. So, and then you tilt again, and turn around. Thought we had that already, so we go to that. So, just stop here and not increase it up to there. Then, then you don't have to crop. That is one thing. Then I go <coughs> see the, it's still, it's over now. Hopefully not. So you see the left atrial appendage, you see the Coumadin ridge here, and then you adjust that, press the button, and then turn it around. And it's gone. Sorry for that. OK. You can also do it from here. So it's a five <laughs> chamber where you have it. And then what was also mentioned, for orientation, it's quite good to have the simultaneous 2D pictures as well. So you see the mitral valve here, which with a lot of smoothing. Then you know that the left atrial appendage should be over there. And that is your aortic valve. <coughs> so, and then if you want to look into the left atrial appendage, you do that cropping. And then you can cut through the left atrial appendage here. That is quite nice, but uh, I think for the clinical thing, it doesn't uh, make a big difference compared to 2D. So again, do that, and then you crop away these things. We come to the LA closure in the, the last slides, if I have enough time for that. So that is, so coming to the left atrial appendage, then it's cropped here. So you have, please include really structures where you can orientate on. So this is part of the mitral. That is the anterior valve. That is the left atrial appendage. Okay, so if you tilt your 3D a little bit more, then you see the Coumadin ridge, and you have the left upper pulmonary wing. OK? You have it here again, just even more tilted, <coughs> mitral valve, left atrial appendage, and then you have the left upper pulmonary wing here together with the left atrial appendage. I think my computer is still in jet, jet lag. So, okay, so you can see a lot of patients have just one ostium where you have the left upper and the, the left lower pulmonary vein here. Then, and if you don't have that smooth smoothing thing, then you will see terrible pictures for that. Coming to the coronary sinus, like that. You see that? Here the smoothing is not really good. 
again, it's from the fourth chamber view, then you press <coughs> the live 3D, you have a 2D cutting plane here with a little bit more elevation. Then you do the brightness and the smoothing. So that is without, that is with smoothing. And you see that the tissue looks smoother. So what you do is you reduce the, the uh, spatial resolution. So, and where is the coronary sinus? What would you do? You have to turn it on. Huh? So the coronary sinus should be there, huh? above the tricuspid valve. So what you do is just rotate it along the z-axis, and then you see the coronary sinus. And again, these are pictures which you don't see in, in 2D. Huh? So you have to really figure out wh what you have to do. Another thing what you can do is you use the 3D zoom. So for that, I would with the 3D zoom, you always have that <coughs> x-plane, so the two simultaneous uh, 2D images. And then you see, OK, coronary sinus is in here. Then you have the 3D zoom. Just for quick orientation, that is aortic valve, mitral valve, and tricuspid. So then you do the cropping. I prefer that free plane cropping, maybe because I started with that, because that was the only option available. Um, so then you crop into that. And then you turn with the trackball. And you see the coronary sinus. By the way, what is that? <coughs> so that is the right atrial. We are now on the right, coronary <coughs> sinus. So what is that? <laughs> Superior vena cava, huh? OK. <coughs> we are coming on that. So then you do, you see, I, f from the left to the right, I adjust the brightness and the smoothing. And I think the structure, at least from my eyes, it's more visible. Also, the, uh, that vessel here, so the superior vena cava. And then you rotate because during, due to the guidelines, the superior vena cava has to be at the 1 o'clock position if you display that. D do you display, do, do you do that regularly? Uh, normally for tissue purposes. Yeah, but, uh, but not for clinical purpose, huh? So, OK, but uh, that is what you do. And again, <coughs> looking at, so, so the post-processing, I think, for these structures is really very, very helpful. So coming to the intraatrial septum, again, coming from the bicable or whatever, what I recommend is that you really adjust your region of interest to cut through the superior vena cava, not really take all the right atrium structure, because then at least I am lost, because then you have to start cropping. So that is the picture you see after rotating. So you see, I, with that region of interest, cut through the superior vena cava, not put it like here, because then you will see a lot of tissues and you have to crop to visualize the superior vena cava. Tha at least that is my, my advice. So th then you have the intraatrial septum from the left atrium side. OK? So that, that is, what is that hole? What do you think? What is that? No, it's, it's still from the left. What we did is just we rotate now. But it's still from the left. It's the intraatrial septum. But what is that? Pardon? If you look at that one, <coughs> yeah, you, you see it's maybe it's the intraatrial uh, aneurys septum, septal aneurysma starts. And that is because of the, of the poor temporal resolution. That is your fossa ovale which c can have the impression that it's in the ASD. It's not. It's just the, 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 the fast-moving fossa ovalis. And here you have your right pulmonary vein, again at the 6 o'clock position. Have it like here. OK? Rotate counterclockwise, and then it's up there. So and if you then turn that in that direction, 
you would not look from the left atrial side, but from the right atrial side. Zip. Okay. Again, that is the fossa ovalis, and that is not the right pulmonary vein. It's yeah, the superior vena cava. Huh? We were lucky because we, we we recorded that during insertion of a central venous uh, catheter, and that is the wire still. So just for better orientation, that is uh, that is what we. I, I thought it's helpful to 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 see the difference. That is the right pulmonary vein, and if you switch. That is the wire of the superior vena cava. And of course, you can also tilt it. And you see here the superior vena cava up there, and down there the right pulmonary vein. So you can look at a lot of different directions. I'm running out of time. Sorry for that. <coughs> so for the intraatrial septum, again, just a smooth of that, and so that is <coughs> what you see if you don't use the smoothing and the, the brightness. It looks terrible, I think. It looks as if it was a real hole everywhere. And it's hard to see. So please use these two bottoms to, to create better pictures. And whatever reason. So that is for for the uh, intraatrial septum repair. Again, you see without smoothing, without brightness on the right side, it's with adjustment. And that is a picture of the ASD. You see that is a true ASD. You have a different a, a membrane in between. And of course, you can also use the 2D. And what was mentioned earlier, for all that guidance, this biplane or multi-view is also 3D. And that helps the interventionists a lot. Because if you start, that is the aorta here. So that means that is anterior, posterior direction. Perpendicular to that is superior, inferior. That helps the interventionists to pass the ASD. And then you pass it with your device, of course. And then you can also do that in 3D, but our interventionists really like the, the multiplane because the temporal resolution is higher. With the live 3D or 3D zoom, you see 11 hertz. It's not a good thing to, to guide the procedure uh, because it's too slow. And then you can nicely see your device, the umbrella up there. You look here from the right atrial side. On the right side, you just can control with color if the closure is successful, and then you can look at the from the left atrial as well as from the right atrial view and see the, uh, the device really closing that ASD. And the same for the left atrial appendage, I promised to you. I really love that X-plane or the, the biplane view where you look at the left atrial appendage and then, whoops. So you do the left atrial closure. Here you have the left <coughs> atrial appendage with the pulmonary wean. And now the computer stalks. That was too fast. All the videos. Sorry for that. He needs a break. And um, just give me a second. What is that structure, by the way, until he, hopefully he will, what is that structure? Left atrial appendage, what is that? <laughs> oh, it's gone. Okay. <laughs> so he needs a break. Sorry for that. So coming to the last one. So here, just the, the last slides to show you. Here you have that explain once again, where you do all the measurements, which I have mentioned from the article. 
and you see the device coming into the left atrial appendage and then you <coughs> see here the watchman device covering the left atrial appendage and finally you see it here we have that is the left atrial appendage and the device <coughs> covering all the ostium i don't find it very helpful in 3d i think because of the frame rate that is really very good and just the last slide for the auto because that is really easy for the for the auto you just take all these views and then you do the white sector the advantage for that i think is that you really see the amount of the atheromas in 3d it at least to, m to my knowledge there's no other clinical advantage so sorry for uh having too much time uh, used for that and thank you for the attention that's it and hope to see you in Leipzig. <laughs>